Hey everyone, today we're covering more of the story, The Joker, The Last Laugh. Here we'll be talking about how the Joker has infected a number of DC villains, especially focusing on some big names this time around, including Solomon Grundy and Lex Luthor. Be sure to subscribe to Comic Island for the full story, and stay tuned for the end as things start to really unravel for the DC Universe. At Star Labs, Superboy is attacked by a number of Jokerized villains. Among them was the Creeper, who proved a formidable threat against the clone turned superhero. Creeper was able to reverse Superboy's metahuman energies back onto the Kryptonian physiology of Connor Kent, allowing for this infected, already unusual individual to easily pummel and humiliate Superboy before fleeing the scene. Creeper then turned onto Daily Planet headquarters, sparking much chaos in the offices of the building as the infected man threatened to blow the entire place up. Eventually, Superboy discovered that the Creeper stopped being a hostile threat when he is laughing, and decided to put on a show to amuse him. Connor dresses himself up along with other Daily Planet staff in women's clothing, the funniest of all clothing and makes a number of stale jokes before lamenting his own situation. Superboy's pitiful speech is enough to make the Creeper calm down and reveal his bomb is actually a dud, bringing the events of this particular tie into an end, much to the relief of the real Joker. In Gotham, another escaped prisoner infected by the Joker gas named Cecilia begins to attack workers at one of the city's docks, while rambling at them incoherently. She is stopped by the Huntress, an established hero in the city, as well as newcomer Sasha Bordeaux, out trying to help civilians in spite of explicit orders from Batman for her to stay home. Cecilia manages to flee from these two, leading to Huntress and Sasha bickering with one another. Huntress warns Sasha that Batman tends to use his allies up while they almost invariably get hurt, before going their separate ways. Sasha then later finds Huntress about to kill Cecilia in a later encounter, and tries to convince her to spare the infected criminal's life. Huntress, who in her last encounter with the Joker was shot four times, doesn't want to give Cecilia any chances, but Sasha views the escaped prisoner as largely a victim of circumstance. When Sasha sees Cecilia charging at some police officers, the woman intervenes, drawing the escaped convict's attention. The infected prisoner begs Sasha for help, clearly confused by the situation, and Huntress uses this opportunity to capture the woman without injuring her. The police agree to take her to Star Labs, where she can hopefully be treated, and Sasha learns that Cecilia only went on this rampage because she learned of her father's death moments before being infected by the Joker toxin. After doing some research, they discover that Cecilia wasn't even a real prisoner, but rather an undercover operative working in the slab that accidentally got infected and caught up in all these events. With what happened to her father, she went completely out of control. The police does agree to take Cecilia to her father's funeral service before she can go for treatment, and the Huntress is left relieved that she didn't harm an innocent woman. In spite of this, she repeats her warning to Sasha that Batman is dangerous, and warns the young woman that working with him will cost her dearly. Sasha acknowledges this, and only hopes that the cost of working with Batman isn't too high. Elsewhere, as these events spill into Halloween night, the Justice Society of America receives news of the breakout. With half the team missing, only a handful are able to respond to the call. Jay Garrick, Alan Scott, and Ted Grant, also known as The Flash, Green Lantern, and Wildcat, respectively, all agree to battle the escaped criminals. They order the two remaining members of the team, the Star-Spangled Kid and Jakeem Thunder, to stay behind, as they are both new and young members of the team. The two heroes agree to remain behind but quickly descend into fighting with each other, all the while handing out Halloween candy to trick-or-treaters. At some point, they see the Statue of Liberty Head land on the street outside of them, alarming the teenagers. They find this to be the work of an infected Solomon Grundy. A powerful undead villain now driven to extreme violence by the Joker gas. The young heroes are quick and eager to respond in spite of Grundy's frightening power, leading to a confrontation in New York's subway tunnels. 
Jakeem manages to rip out Grundy's eye, but the zombie-like being simply reattaches it by shoving it back into his face. When Grundy grabs and threatens to crush the star-spangled kid, Jakeem summons the Thunderbolt, a longtime ally of the JSA composed entirely of living lightning. This being then flies towards Grundy and electrocutes him from the inside. The youngsters have Thunderbolt to repair the Statue of Liberty, while the experience leaves them feeling a newfound respect for one another. Off in Keystone City, the original wielder of the Thunderbolt, Johnny Thunder, detects these events unfolding, and decides it is time for him to return home. Somewhere in the Utah desert, Hal Jordan, known as the Spectre these days, sits in a gloomy state. He speaks with the spirit of his old companion, Avan Sir, miserable over their current situation. Hal recently learned that most of his family has died, and he has found himself, in spite of being a very dead and very powerful spirit, he is now tasked with somehow also raising his eight-year-old niece, Helen. He and Avan visit the girl, but when she breaks down crying over the recent death of her parents, Hal is only able to retreat, detecting the sudden influx of Joker toxin into the minds of so many supervillains on the psychic plane. With his heightened sense of awareness as the Spectre, Hal is able to quickly determine what the Joker is up to, and finds him on Easter Island. He reaches out into the Joker's mind in an effort to put the madness to a sudden end, but instead is only served to be infected with the Joker's psyche. Hal is sent flying away from the shock of this event, landing on top of the moon's surface and becoming badly afflicted by the insanity of the Joker. The Spectre vomits a strange green substance and then flies back to Earth in a panic. Unbeknownst to him, a being known as Parallax emerges from this green waste. This creature, who Hal had once become and done terrible things in the name of, immediately attacks the Spectre in space around Earth's orbit. Parallax, now also infected and bolstered by the Joker toxin, gleefully declares himself to be more powerful than ever, soon overpowering the deadly might of the Spectre, and no matter what Hal does, he is unable to escape Parallax's wrath. This entity then attacked Jordan's niece in an effort to torture Hal. This forces the Spectre to surrender rather than risk any harm coming to Helen, and so Parallax removed the spirit's head and began to taunt Jordan before dissolving Hal into nothingness entirely. Now completely unconstrained and as mad as the Joker, Parallax becomes eager to inflict his particular brand of horror on the world. As he deliberates his next action, considering killing the real Joker and taking the villain's army for himself, suddenly the Spectre's voice speaks out to him from nowhere. Hal, as it turns out, survived being sent into oblivion as the Spectre transcends the limits of matter and states of being. This experience only expanded Jordan's sense of his new powers and understanding of the sheer magnitude of the Spectre and what this being is. He is of the Divine, of such power that it goes beyond anything in creation, even Parallax. And with these words, the Spectre re-emerged in full around this being, reabsorbing Parallax back into himself. Hal noted that he would never be free of this darkness, but gained a sense of confidence and perspective on it, now knowing he would always be able to control it as the Spectre. Jordan returned to Helen, finally able to provide comfort for his niece, while he and Abin Sir began to read her a bedtime story. Hal did not wind up intervening any further in the Joker incident, likely out of concern that he would only make things much worse as he very nearly did to begin with but also because he was then contacted by the Phantom Stranger. That night, President Lex Luthor is approached by his bodyguards, not realizing they too have been infected with the Joker toxin. The next day, Clark Kent comes in to check in on his adoptive father, who had recently returned to life after being thought dead for some time. While checking out the state of Smallville, which had fallen on hard times, they see on the news a dire development in the ongoing Joker crisis. The President of the United States seems to have become infected too, ranting on the air about the next election, still three years away, while making unusual proclamations like children now being allowed to vote 
and encouraging Americans to stop working entirely. In response to this, the vice president begins taking over quietly behind the scenes. While Clark Kent observes the president traveling by train at a wild speed, passing by Smallville. He decides to confront Luther as Superman, hardly amused at his longtime enemy's antics, but willing to help the man seek professional help. In response, Luther, working in coordination with a number of infected military personnel, launches a series of nuclear missiles. Superman is forced to carry them out to space for disposal, while on the vice president's orders, a group of pilots using robotic suits, ironically built by LexCorp, attack the president. With the military intent on killing the president rather than letting him slip out of control, Superman rushes in to protect Lex Luthor's life and begins to destroy the robotic suits. He grabs Luthor before the man can launch any more ICBMs into the air and brings him to Star Labs for treatment. With this, the White House goes into damage control mode claiming the president was only suffering an issue with some cold medicine, while quietly swearing the vice president in for the time being. Settling into this temporary new role, and with his childhood friend Lana Lang at his side, acting president Pete Ross gives the American military only one order. Kill the Joker. We'll go over what happens next time on Comic Island. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you then.